Good afternoon. Thank you, Lindsay. Will you all bow your heads with me in prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here to share the word and the love that you have shown me. Please slow my words, please slow my heart, and give me strength through this, and let my words be yours. I pray all this in your son's name. Amen. So as Lindsay said, I'm a fairly new follower of Christ. Um, I grew up in a military family. We bounced around every two to three years. Um, three years was about the max that we lived in one place. We attended church on base some of the times. I believed in God, but I was never truly a follower. I honestly didn't think that he belonged in my daily life. I didn't think he was interested in my daily life. I made so many mistakes. I told so many lies. I betrayed friends. I lied to my parents. I disobeyed my parents. I stole, I drank, I did drugs, and I mistook sex for love. I failed out of college because of these choices. I was really good at twisting the facts of the story to make it seem like I was the victim. Like all these bad things just happened to me, that I just had really bad luck. I began to believe the lies that I was telling others, and I began to relish in the pity that they were giving me. I also began to believe that I deserved all of that mess. That didn't stop God's grace. All of that mess didn't stop God from seeing me. My mess didn't stop him from calling me or from using me. I soon discovered that God is much bigger than my mess. God placed some very important people in my life to help me realize this crazy calling. I met my husband, Paul, in 2008. He was raised Southern Baptist and seemed to have such a strong grip on his faith. And to be honest, I was a bad influence on him. I was the one on Sunday mornings who was like, we don't have to go to church. We're two or more gathered, right? And he never gave up on me. He was such a good example. He was a prime example of what a Christian is and should be. Through his passive persistence, I kept attending church most of the time. A few years later, I entered Pastor Bobby. He met with me time and time again. He let me question everything. He let my biology major, scientific mind, poke holes in what I believed was his faith. He gave me book after book to read and would meet with, meet with me to discuss all of his questions as they came up. They both let me unload my mess. They both let me cry, let me heal, and pushed me to finally be honest with myself. I truly thought both of them would turn and run once they knew the truth about me. I thought well, if they were going to, then of course the church would. Of course, God would. You see, all of that mess, all of that mess made me afraid, made me so afraid and fearful that once people found out my truth or saw my mess, that they would reject me. I felt I'd I deserved that rejection. Paul and I started attending a Bible study that Lindsay mentioned called Not a Fan. And for those of you who are not familiar with that series, it's about a living a life not as a fan of God, cheering for him in the stands on Sunday morning, but living out the rest of your week without his influence, but truly becoming a follower of Christ all day, every day. Matthew 16, 24 was repeated over and over again in that series. Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. Now keep in mind, I took a lot of work. A lot of questions were answered, but so many times my questions did not result in answers. My mess clouded my judgment so much that I had mixed feelings on organized religion, and I still held on to a lot of bitterness and still a lot of doubt. Sure, Paul and Pastor Bobby had accepted me, but I still fully didn't believe that the church would. I also wasn't completely convinced that baptism was necessary to prove that I believed in God. So the idea of denying myself had my stubborn, independent, anti-religion feathers all ruffled. We continued on in that Bible study, and I began volunteering in our church's nursery. I felt like I was doing my part, but with little to no risk. The babies, and the parents for that matter, wouldn't question my beliefs or my doubts, but I was serving as our church Bible study said I should be doing. I still wasn't all in. I was still holding out. I was still full of doubts. I doubted if I deserved forgiveness. I doubted if I deserved God's grace. I doubted if his grace was good enough to cover my mess. 
I doubted that I even belonged. As the Bible study went deeper, I started to feel that sting of conviction. I needed to put my past behind me if I was ever going to move forward in my faith. I felt I needed a fresh start. I needed to be washed clean. You all know what that meant. <laughs> I met with Pastor Bobby and Paul and I had to be baptized. I couldn't take it any longer. I had to be baptized. That feeling that I had as Pastor Bobby prayed over me and as I emerged from that water is still so undescribable and exhilarating and it's one of the most amazing things that I've ever done. And I've been skydiving and have two kids. <laughs> after all of that, after all of the hugs and the tears and the emotions, I was alone in that changing room. It was quiet and I felt at peace. I felt safe. They had a shirt laid out for me to change into and it had 2 Corinthians 5.17 printed on the back. If anyone is in Christ, a new creation has come, the old is gone and the new is here. That shirt, that scripture did not say those raised in the church. It did not say those without doubts or those who are perfect or those who have never sinned. It said anyone and I wept. I could no longer deny what God was calling me to do. I wanted to follow him. I could no longer just volunteer in the nursery. So I signed up to volunteer in the Welcome Center. I wanted to make sure that everybody felt welcome. I was signed up to teach Sunday school to elementary school students. Even though I knew they knew more about the Bible than I did, I said yes, even though I was terrified to leading a group of middle school ladies. Not a fan had taught me it's about a relationship, not a religion. And I wanted that relationship with those girls. The biggest yes at that time was to go to Haiti to share the gospel. Paul and I did not know how we were going to pay for it. We had no idea what to expect once we got there. We were being stretched further than either of us had ever been stretched before, but we couldn't deny the calling that God had for us to go. So we said yes. That trip changed my life, absolutely changed my life. I was asked to teach preschool age kids, and since I was a preschool teacher and now a Sunday school teacher, I said yes. I was still nervous, so I prayed and I prayed and I asked God to fill me with his words to take my nervousness and my nauseousness and turn it into excitement and joy to tell the world about him and how he loved everyone, even someone like me. When it was my turn to teach the littles, I walked into that open air, mud and rock building filled with people. I looked at my translator, I saw all the littles around, and then I looked up and saw all the adults that stayed in that space. I completely lost my nerve. I ran out, I ran away as far as I could get from what they considered to be their pulpit. Pastor Bobby and Paul and several others from our team found me smack in the middle of a panic attack, all because there were adults that wanted to hear the word of God, and I felt ill-equipped to share it with anyone other than the littles. I felt that since I was so new in my faith, I had nothing to teach anyone other than those children. I felt no one would listen to such a baby Christian, nor should they. I felt I had nothing to offer that room. My team was amazing. They circled around me and prayed without ceasing. They prayed that I stop listening to the devil and to my doubts, but instead started truly hearing God's calling for me. They prayed that I leave all my mess at that threshold of that building and remind myself of the scripture verse our trip had adopted as our mantra, Matthew 28, 19. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations. That scripture, did not say, only teach the littles, or only the ones you are comfortable teaching. It said, all nations. That included those adults in that room. And I felt brave. Well, not really. My knees were still shaking like crazy, but I felt the Bible in my hands. I still felt nauseous, but I walked into that building to teach the message that God had given me to teach. That trip was a small step on the journey of discovery for God's calling to preach. Later, God placed many more opportunities in my life that further solidified that calling. I went from a preschool teacher in a public school, sad that I couldn't talk about Jesus, to teaching in a preschool at our church where I was able to tell Bible studies every single week. I continued to be a Sunday school teacher and a small group leader for my middle school ladies. But the next big step was to the children's minister position at our church. Pastor Bobby asked me to, and I said no, twice. All of my doubts and insecurities came flooding back. 
I just knew that those parents would be up in arms, light the torches, chase me down, and make sure I was fired. I felt so ill-equipped and lost just as I did that day in Haiti. Someone with a mess as much as mine in their past should not be allowed to teach the Bible. Someone who had to ask for as much forgiveness as I had to should never be approved to lead. Someone with so many doubts should never be the one to assure others for a living. My husband and my pastor urged me to see that that was exactly why I needed to take the job. So Pastor Bobby asked a third time, and I said yes. They kept telling me that God doesn't call the equipped. He equips the called. I just had to trust in him. So here we are. So many of the students that I talk with, and honestly many of the adults that I meet with, think that their mess is just too messy. And you might feel the same, that your past is clouded with sin, that your past defines you. But I want to encourage you to let God use your mess. After many panic attacks and nauseous Sunday mornings, and if I'm being honest again, nauseous Friday afternoons, I do believe that God called me to preach to my students, to share my story, to expose my mess. I never thought God would use my mess to reach others, to reach students. I never thought my mess would be a way to share the gospel. I never thought that God would use me. In times of doubt, when I am doubting my abilities or struggling with my past, I look to John 8, specifically verse 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I ask God to remind me that, if nothing else, my mess can be used to lead others, to show others, no matter their past, they can be filled with joy from the Lord and confident in their hopes for the future. I believe that God has a calling for each of us. What we choose to do with that calling, how we respond to our calling, is part of our story. And God will use your story to reach others, to call others. You just have to trust in him. Deny yourself. Allow Christ to change your heart to become a new creation, make disciples, and share the light of the world. Thank you.